up is a funk term. You know, coming from funk music, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Bootsy Collins and George Clinton and those guys. Fernando would know. Yeah, they created a sound called Funkadelic, which was inspired by the funk sounds, you know, like James Brown and those kind of guys there. But they had some psychedelic influences in their lifetimes, which influenced their creativity. And they've got a whole sound of music that you don't find anywhere else known as Funkadelic. And then they had a term called the slop or cosmic slop, which is like when you go into the depths of something you get right into the you know to the source into the it's the slop you know right. and um, that slop is also shit so this is a spin of talking shit so that's all we're doing is talking shit it's not serious there's no i have no agendas i have no question premeditated questions or anything what this is about is me connecting with people obviously i'm setting up a youtube channel but it's about connecting with people who i've worked with who i've been inspired by who i think are doing great things and amazing things in the community whether it's through psychedelics or grassroots work and you're one of those people so okay. i wanted to make sure that i connect with you before you know in the first phase i want to start with people who I actually grew up with you know mm. who, who i think are doing great things and i've kind of just taken this journey and connecting with people there now i'm in the psychedelic era it's like yeah who are the people who looked out for me and have shown me some love i'm going to do the same Hopefully we're going to get a viral or two video, a video goes viral or two and it becomes more popular. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just want to s s allow people to find out more about me, you, what we do, what you're doing, you know, and just talk shit. And that's how we do it. And it's been going really well because just to bring you the concept <laughs> as well. So um, talking shit comes from the fact that I talk a lot of shit, especially with my mates, you know, who I grew up with and that my ran. And some people see me as a serious person. Uh, Ew. Yeah, you know, <laughs> people are like, oh, because some people know me as a teacher. Oh, he's a teacher oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's this. And it's like, no, you don't really know me. Like, <laughs> the full, you know, the full spectrum. And what I've gathered is the time when I sit down and talk shit with people is like when magical things happen, you know, conversations that come out of it, you know, you never planned. and. You know, next thing you know, you just popped in to see someone and you're there for hours just talking shit or talking slop, <laughs> as we're referring to it. And at the same time, you've got a green finger. You you should be aware as well how important shit is in horticulture and just making things, keep keeping Mother Nature going. It's, very, it's a very important fuel. So this is all about not removing the shit, not thinking shit is bad or it's just some waste thing. It's like using it, having finding its value. And in this conversation, I hope that we will talk some shit and there'll be some valuable shit that'll come out of it. And people will be able to utilise it and fertilise their minds and, you know, their hearts and their spirits or whatever through us talking shit. I like this. <laughs> people will fertilise their minds through us talking shit. Love it. <laughs> we'll make a career out of that. <laughs> you got it, you got it, you got it. And like I've, as I said, I've gone from people from all walks of life and the stuff that's coming up has just been, you know, has been therapeutic for me in some ways for them as well you know just stuff you know people that you'd be familiar with on a psychedelic circuit people I know who are creatives you know and just talking shit and you know obviously I have an interest in psychedelics like you do so that has been a running theme through some of the conversations but it's really just going into you know who you are what you bring to the table and just seeing if we can spread the spores and you know allow people to understand why we're passionate about what we do <laughs> So with that said, how I have been starting it, just by asking people, who are you? What do you do? What do you bring to the table? Mm. And yeah, we'll just pick it up from there. Difficult question. Who am I? My name is Anya. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think if I had to <clears throat> say who I am, I am a co-director of the Psychedelic Society, first of all, and a filmmaker, and I specialize in documentaries. Mm. And recently I've been really into documenting psychedelic movement and spreading education about psychedelics to the broader community. Okay, thank you. And um, how long have you been doing that for? Time goes quick. I think three years. I was trying to remind myself mm -hmm. when did I join society. So I joined society three years ago. Okay. But I've been in the movement for, in the movement I think for about four years. Mm -hmm. But psychedelics have been big part of my life since I was 18 years old and my friends, my friends who were older than me mm -hmm. and more experienced and I trusted them gave me LSD and I just thought wow this is like the best thing in the world <laughs> <laughs> and thank you friends for showing this to me so yeah. they always been there in my life wicked we're definitely going there because that's where we like to go <laughs> um so I'll just jump in there to say, you know, just to add a few bits before we go back, because, uh, you know, some people may be already familiar with you, you know, and, you know, the, the film work, you know, you're involved in the community already, 
but what I like to do or what I've been asking of people or suggesting is that in these conversations that um, I don't know how many interviews you do and you know you, you get your information face out there but I don't want it to be one of those ones this is more like yeah who are you and what you know how did you find out about psychedelics you know it's not that a- a- academically driven stuff it's really grassroots down to earth types of conversation so it's stuff like that it's really about getting this dialogue going on especially as us you as you would know in where i come from growing up psychedelics wasn't a thing that i was introduced to as a young age most people were scared of it it was a taboo it's something you stay away from so i think in breaking down those barriers it's just conversation i think that's the first phase is just having some conversations and educating people about what's going on and how people got introduced to it and stuff like that so what i do want to say though just piggybacking off your introduction um i think not even think, I can't remember exactly how many years ago it was that we originally met, but um, I've observed all the people that I've been working with, I've observed them just like I guess they've been observing me in different ways. And um, I'm really proud of what I've seen you do over the years, you know, going from us meeting in a pub, a random pub, <laughs> you know, in, in East London, East North London. And then, um, you know, with an idea that you was working on or you, you'd started it, but it was just, you know, inspired by experiences, I guess, that you had had. And um, I've seen you do and connect with, groundbreaking people to get to a point now where I'm sure you're funding and you know about to or yeah. a bit you know been doing a campaign to get funding and basically I've just seen that you've been consistent in your work and the same thing I was saying with Amy yesterday just I mean I observe people and some people talk a good game and some people do it just to tick boxes and to look like they're achieving or doing whatever they need to do and I just observe people even if they don't get to the end of the goal that they just stick and stay consistent with what they're doing and that's something that I've observe from you and appreciate about what you bring to the table uh, not many people I don't often tell people how much they inspire me you know as much as like oh well done good stuff but even yesterday doing my little film <laughs> I made reference to directors <laughs> and um, I was just saying how yeah I had an experience a few weeks ago working with people in filming and I was with Philip one of our you know our allies who you're familiar with um, and I was just thinking about it yeah you're just really good at what she does you know I don't know how often people are telling him because he, he was good at what he does as well and like there's not many people that I you know just from my experience because he made me feel really comfortable he's putting the camera in front of my face and he made me feel really comfortable and like you're really good at what you do I said the only other person who makes me feel or made me feel that comfortable in, in your years with yourself so just to say you're good at what you do <laughs> I like what you do you're doing a good <laughs> job and I just wish you all the best with all the work you're doing and you know filmmaking and all that good stuff there if we go back I want to go back to here like where are you from you know how did you get to being interested in psychedelics and eventually getting to the point where you want to make a film or you're making documentaries mm. about it so it's just that journey and whatever you feel and I'll jump in and you know, sure see where we're at. <clears throat> also question quick did you want to close the window because Fernando's making sounds or I don't yeah I think we'll be all right okay yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. is that the sound really yeah, maybe we should put it. Just close it. You know what? It's it's really good window. It's gonna be a bit hot, but we should put it fine. in there. You know, just a little bit of. Yeah, it's rest. gonna be quieter. Right. So my journey. I was born. So yes. So we are recording. We are recording. So I was born in Poland, in quite significant place that everybody knows in the world, um, because it, it's Auschwitz. It's it's place where obviously you had Nazi camps and that. So I grew up there and always kind of was really aware of a lot of human suffering and trauma. So I always had some kind of, since I was a child, I was quite interested in, in mental health, always helping people. And, you know, I was always um, touched by people with mental health illnesses. And I saw a lot of autistic kids around and always tried to reach out and talk to them. And uh, we moved out of there quite soon and when i was younger we grew up in a really beautiful town by the seaside and my mom always had a beautiful garden and there was always nature we would always go to the forest to pick mushrooms at 4 a.m and it was just like i was always very very into plants and all this natural lifestyle thanks to my mom and uh, when I was growing up, I was a really rebellious person and I was into metal music and hip hop, which was quite controversial in Poland at that point, <laughs> because there was hardly any hip hop in Poland. And I was just like, just rebelling against mainstream and everything. And uh, when I was 18, I met psychedelics, as I told you already, I tried some LSD and it really showed me different way of thinking and it showed me that 
everything is important in this world and this world is much bigger than this reality um, and the connection to nature was even stronger uh, that first LSD trip also helped me because I, I, I was I think I struggled with depression when I was young quite a lot um, I didn't understand it yet I just thought this is normal mm -hmm. that everybody feels shit all the time uh, but LSD showed me that life is actually great and I can achieve whatever I want and show me all those beautiful things. So a year later I decided to leave Poland because I was very unhappy there. Poland is not the great place to live. It's very prejudiced. It's very narrow minded. I'm not saying everyone, but generally it's very right wing and I didn't fit in there. I wanted to go to the place where I will not be arrested for smoking cannabis and put in jail for 10 years. Because that is the case in Poland. To this day? To this day, yes. To this day, it's really, it's really bad. My, my previous partner, he uh, was caught with just like 0 0.2 gram of weed on him. And he was put in jail for two weeks with people who are murderers and all kinds of, you know, really big criminals. And he was really scared for his life. Sure. So I didn't want to be in a situation when, where I want to just have a cannabis joint and I am arrested and put into jail for 10 years and my future is wife and in UK cannabis was um, class C at that point when I moved in here magic mushrooms were legal you could buy them easily in shops so I came here for <laughs> four days for holidays and I went to Camden Market and I saw the mushrooms <laughs> and I'm like whoa this is a great country <laughs> i'm definitely going to move here and i remember we we bought magic mushrooms with my partner at that time and we had a nice trip in greenwich park and everything is very civilized you know and i thought like this is home this is i want to move to uk i want to live here people are free here not like in poland and so i think it took me two months and i was here i had a job and i applied for university to study photography and yeah i was very happy here um obviously law changed and cannabis was declassified to class b and mushrooms were declassified so this all changed but it was already my home and it still was freer and people were less prejudiced so i couldn't finish my photography course because i had to work and the money situation wasn't good so i couldn't study and work it was just impossible so i started working in pubs and it was really hard um, hospitality sector, as you probably know, it's not the nicest sector to work in. I was studying in the meantime also um, digital media production, so I was learning about graphic design and video and audio, uh, but in the meantime working really hard. Uh, I remember people who were like stockbrokers and businessmen who looked down at us and treat us with patronizing, you know, way and and I was always remembering, thinking, oh, one day I'll show you. <laughs> um, and uh, I finished studying my BA and I was accepted to work in a, my university as a graphic designer. That was okay. first big step for me to leave hospitality and start normal life with a proper job. Um, and how old was you when you got to the UK and started? Just 19. Wow, wow. I'm very young, I'm 36 now. I've been here for 16 years, it's home. <laughs> Never lived anywhere in the world longer than in London. Wow, yeah. it's a big step, man. Very good. It's the best step I've ever made. This this city, I, it, it's tiring sometimes, but I have everything I have thanks to this city. And like working as a graphic designer gave me loads of confidence already, but I was still really, really depressed all the time. Uh, but it gave me a boost. And I decided to study documentary filmmaking because it brought me back to those times when I was a kid and when I was like mental health and people who have trauma, they need help, you know. So I thought, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not good at this. Maybe I can make stories about those people to bring awareness to the problems so we can now reach out to broader community to find solutions. So I studied documentary for a year and I loved it. It was great. I had great teachers. I love Mark Chapman. I love this guy. <laughs> he taught me so much. Um, and uh, at some point I got a new job in Marie Curie, which is a charity mm. dealing with mental health, uh, sorry, with um, palliative care and end of life care, terminally ill people. 
And while I was really happy professionally, I was getting more and more depressed. And I didn't know why, I didn't understand why. And it was getting worse and worse. And I reminded myself that, oh, psychedelics, they helped me back in the days. Mm -hmm. Should dip in again to them. And this is when my friend and me <laughs> decided to have our heroic chip on LSD, which we didn't quite understand the dosing yet. <laughs> Um, I was, yeah, so we took, I think, two or three times higher dose than my previous trips no. without understanding anything about it. And we went for a walk and it was really stupid because soon we figured out we can't walk. And like, we definitely have to sit down right now, <laughs> maybe even lay down <laughs> on the grass. And the whole, the whole universe was in front of my eyes, my whole life and all the lives of people who lived bef before me on all the continents and I was kind of transported there like to Egypt to um, Turkey with the Sufis somewhere in England like to all those ancient places and I felt that in our DNA in our blood we have all this information written down it's all there another thing I saw is that uh, it, it kind of showed me that, oh yes, you are depressed, you have depression, there was this trauma in your life which you completely forgot about. Like, I didn't think I'm traumatized, but I was really traumatized actually through many things that happened in my family and in my life. And that, that trip was the most important thing that happened in my life, I think, because that turned me around from my career making money making like not making money but making career being someone it, it showed me more like no your role is still to keep people to keep helping people it brought me back to that original uh, mission i have and uh, i kept taking psychedelics uh, every two three months and doing a lot of yoga meditation work kind of self-therapy and after I think six, seven, eight months, I don't remember exactly, I felt so good. I went for a retreat, psychedelic retreat, legal in the Netherlands, and took psychedelics in group settings, which was another level to healing because that stopped me from having social anxiety. And I suddenly felt like, oh my God, I can talk to people. I'm, I'm like, I'm confident. Wow, I'm confident. What happened? <laughs> and... From then on, I said, I need to tell this story to people. I need to shout from left and right that psychedelics helped me to not heal, but to shift something. And then the healing started. And then I went to breaking convention and I saw all this research happening, which I didn't have a clue it's happening. I didn't know that people are using psychedelics for depression. It was a new thing. So I hear all those people and I see what like 2,000 people, 1,000 people come to breaking convention. I'm thinking, there's so many of us. There's not just me and my friend. There's like loads of us there in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that gave me such a strength. And then I met a lovely person, Julian Vane, which you know as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Julian, um, he was kind enough to have a meeting with me when he was in London. And I just asked him, who's cool to talk to, who should I interview for my documentary about psychedelics? And he told me about you. <laughs> he told me about you and he told me about Princesa and uh, Nikki Weird and all the other people. So I started reaching out and say, hi, I'm Anya. I'm making a documentary. Do you want to be in it? So that's how we met. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it is. <laughs> they got Julian. They got Julian. Yeah, man. And then I started meeting all the lovely people like yourself and Ben and... Rosalyn Watts, Christopher Timmerman, and it just kind of snowballed. Um, together with meeting them, we kind of quickly started becoming friends because there's common language. Uh, I got involved in the Netherlands um, Psychedelic Society a lot. My best friend is a uh, co founder of it and director of it, Marta. Big up, Marta. Big up, Marta. <laughs> I love you. Me too, man. Um, Keep up the good work. And also met lovely people from Fire Juice, Ben and Sonia, mm -hmm. from the Psychedelic Bed and Breakfast, which you also know. And they, too, yeah, man. they also changed my life so much because I felt love and, and just this bond with them. And they also, uh, they also like you a lot. <laughs> I like them a lot too. I really like, on that note, I just thank you as well for 
allowing me into your world and allow me to meet your friends and then it's all just one big happy family and you know now the Netherlands is like a second home to me man so it's like me too. I've met some real cool people there and yeah Fire Juice is definitely one of the places I suggest people go to when they want to you know chill out in the Netherlands <laughs> exactly <laughs> Fire Juice is the best we also went together to Prague remember yeah, we were invited yeah. by Eva also big up Eva from the Czech uh society yeah. she just invited us as both me to film and you to yeah, give talks yeah, and shrimp shops yeah, yeah, yeah. so and we started Bruno, getting a yeah. yeah a few places and then we've done the festival circuit man you know we dance festival <laughs> anthropos there was not there was all yeah, yeah so we just started getting invited to come to places meet new people mm -hmm. two years ago i also was asked by steven reed founder of the Psychedelic society to join because they needed a filmmaker <clears throat> So I've been doing this for two years, just doing lots of education, really, organizing talks. I organize ayahuasca conference, which we were invited to, and did a lot of videos. So yeah, I think it just kind of snowballed, and now I'm really amazed in this movement, and that's all I do, pretty much. Mm -hmm.